Hi everybody, okay, welcome back. We're looking today at Jeremy Duff, Elements of New Testament Greek. We're in chapter 6, we're at the halfway practice of this chapter on the tenses, where we've introduced the future, imperfect and aorist tenses. We're now going to look at some of these practice exercises just to help you to get to grips with uh, what these different tenses mean in practice and how to use them. Just one quick word of advice um, at this stage. One of the things that's really important to be doing as you're working through each chapter is to keep going to the end of the chapter to the vocabulary list because it's going to become increasingly important that you can readily and quickly spot particular words, particular vocabulary in the sentences you're starting to translate. And the reason is because those words are going to start getting more cluttered with the epsilon augments and the sigma suffixes and a wider variety of endings in the case of verbs. And as we come on to different noun structures, you're going to have more uh, clutter in the words because of that. So you really do need to keep going with the vocabulary and it's much easier, it is much easier to keep doing it a bit at a time rather than you get to the end of the chapter and you've got suddenly 30 words to learn and you go, oh, you lose the will to live, don't you? Okay, so let that be an encouragement to you. A couple of words a day is much better than trying to do 30 words in a fortnight. Okay, let's take a look at these first three examples and I'll give you some in a moment as well of the last ones that go English into Greek. These though are Greek into English. And let me try and highlight the method I use to, um, uh, to decipher these. Okay, here goes number one. Uh, edidasken ton oklon. Edidasken ton oklon. Okay, first thing you need to do, find the verb. Where's the verb in this sentence? The verb is here, edidasken. Comes from, and this is why you need to know the vocabulary, comes from didasko, meaning I teach. So let's just highlight the stem first. Didask is the stem. Didask is the stem. The reason it's important to highlight that, that's the first thing you want to look for, because the next thing you want to look for is the epsilon augment and sigma suffix. So this means I teach. Epsilon augment, yes. Sigma suffix, no. That then tells you the tense. So it's imperfect. Imperfect. So it's happening in the past extended in time in some way. Come to how we translate that in a second. So you've done the stem, you've done the epsilon augment and sigma suffix, next you look at the ending. And the ending is n, so you go back in your mind, and this is why you need to have learned those, that, those things from before. It's uh, the paradigm verb luo, in the imperfect is eluon, elues, eluen, eluomen, eluete, eluon. So on s n, this is third person singular. So this means he, she, or it, imperfect, so in the past, extended in time, the simple gloss for an imperfect most of the time is, in this case, he or she or it was teaching. It doesn't always mean that. Sometimes it's appropriate to translate it in a different way. But a simple gloss for the imperfect to give the sense of a past action extended in time is... Um, Let's call it, give it she, that's actually what Duff does in this case. She was teaching. She was teaching. That's distinct, of course, from the aorist or the, uh, the, the other past tense, if you like, where you want to say an action has happened in the past, but you don't want to say that it's extended in time, in which case you just say she taught. Okay, so Eddie Daskin, she was teaching. Um, is there a, a separately lexicalized subject? Noun in the nominative? No. Is there an object? Yes, ton oklon is, that's right, the crowd, the crowd. So he, she, or it was teaching the crowd. And if you look in the back, Duff has gone for she was teaching the crowd. Okay, very good. So that's number one. Okay, let's take a look at this second example. Here it goes. Hotheos akuse autu. Hotheos akuse autu. Okay, what do we do with this? Same as before. Ugly there, right? Akuse. Same as before, we find the verb, which is Akuse, akuse, and that comes from the verb akuo. So the stem is aku, you find the stem. Next, you look for epsilon augments and sigma suffixes. No epsilon augment. There is, however, a sigma suffix, so that's in the future. Now you look for the ending stem, epsilon augment, and sigma suffix, ending. And the ending is a, and that's nice and easy because the future is the same as the present tense in its ending, so. Accuso, accuses, accuse, third person singular, future indicative active. So this means he, she, or it, let's give it he, will, hear. 
he will hear. Nice and simple. Third person singular means it could have a separately lexicalized subject at this stage of the course. And of course it does, hotheos is in the nominative. So God will hear, and now finally, what else is there? Well, that's a little bit of a puzzle, isn't it? Because you might be expecting uh, object noun in the accusative. What you've got here is our two, which is the third person pronoun, him or he or she uh, or it, but in the genitive singular. What's that all about? Anybody remember? Yes, of course you do. The, the verb akuo takes an object in the accusative if it's the thing heard, genitive if it's the person heard. Accusative of thing heard, per, uh, genitive of person heard. And that's back earlier in Duff, there's an earlier video on that, which means that therefore this means God will hear not of him, which is how you might woodenly translate this, but just God will hear him. God will hear him. Maybe God will listen to him, but I prefer God will hear him because it doesn't clutter the sentence up any more than it needs to. So that's the second one. Finally, the third one, we'll do number eight, just skipping down a little bit, and then we'll come back in a second and do some of the English into Greek. Okay, number eight, hoi adelphoi uk episteusan. Hoi adelphoi uk episteusan. Okay, what are we going to do with this? Same as before. We're going to find the verb, which is very easy. It's episteusan. So stem, epsilon augment and sigma suffix, ending. Where's the stem? The stem is Pistu from pistuo, meaning I believe, I believe. It's got an epsilon augment and it's got a sigma suffix. So if it's got both, it's an aorist, which means you want to describe it as an action that happened in the past, but you don't want to imply that you're saying that it was extended in time. So pistuo, I believe, aorist, it's going to be I believed if it's first person singular, but it's not first person singular because the ending is an. So we just go through the endings of uh, aorist verbs, and we start with, uh, just with the paradigm verb, luo, so it's elusa, elusas, elusen, elusamen, elusata, elusan. Third person plural. So third person plural of pistuo in the aorist is they, plural, third person, believed. They believed. They believed. Okay, so now what else have you got? Well, you've got the uh, verb. Now we look for a, a subject. Have you got a subject? Well, you might expect one, third person plural, and you've, indeed you've got a nominative plural noun. So, hoi adelphoi, the brothers, the brothers believed. Anything else you've got? Ah, yes you have. You've got ook, which negates the verb. So it turns it into a not, didn't do it. So the brothers not believed, well, that's not how we say it in English, is it? Did not believe. The brothers did not believe. So there's some examples of Greek into English. Okay, now let's look at these examples of going from English into Greek. 9, 10 and 12, right there in the halfway practice on page 71. Okay, so we used to take the boat. We used to take the boat. Now just pause for a second. Don't freak out, don't panic over all these words where you don't, you think, I don't know how to translate to use to. Well, just think for a second. Where's the verb in this sentence? Well, the action that's being spoken of is the action of taking. The action of taking. And we know how to translate the word I take, don't we? So I take is lambano, whoops, lambano. I take or I receive. Okay, fine, so if I wanted to just say I take, it would be lambano, but I don't want to say that. I want to say we, so that's first person plural, and used to take. So just think for a second now, which of the four tenses are you going to use? Did this happen in the past? Is it happening now? Or is it happening in the future? Well, fairly obviously, it's happening in the past. So if it's a past action, then you're thinking imperfect or aorist. They're your two options for a past action. And the next question to distinguish between aorist and imperfect is very simple. Do you want to say that this action was extended in time in any way? Or do you want to just say, it happened and I'm telling you nothing else about it? 
Just look at it for a second. We used to take the boat. Gives an impression of an action that was extended through time. It's a past action that's habitual. A habitual past action. We used to take the boat. Like every day we used to take the boat across the pond to go fishing or something. Or every weekend we used to take the boat down the river to see grandma or something like that. A past action that's habitual is one way in which the one one meaning which can arise from the imperfect in Greek because it's a past action that's extended in time in some way. So first person plural imperfect of lambano. Excellent. So we've got the stem. Next thing epsilon augment or sigma suffix. Well, if it's imperfect, we want an e eh, elamban elamban, and then we need to do the ending correctly. What are the endings for the imperfect? Well, you do the paradigm verb, the usual thing, where you go eluon, elues, eluen, eluomen, eluete, eluon. So the ending in the first person plural, eluon, elues, eluen, eluomen, first person plural. So el, lam, ban, omen. We used to take the boat. Eluon, Eloes, Eloen, Eloomen, Eloete, Eloon. Let me just check that I've written down these other examples right, because if I'm messing you around, then that would not be good. Yeah, good, I've got these right. Sorry about that. Right, so Elambanomen, we used to take, and now the next thing you want to do is just find the uh, object, the boat, well that's toploion, neuter noun, so it's toploion is in the nominative, it's also the same in the accusative, so, elam barnomen ta ploi on. Elam barnomen ta ploi on. Is how you would say in Greek, simply, we used to take the boat. Okay, good. Right, number 10. Next one, they believed God. They believed God. Let's take a look at that for a second. Find the verb for me. Of course, the verb is very simple. The verb is believed. Now, uh, let's just remind ourselves of what that verb is in Greek. The verb, I believe, is pistuo. So we write pistuo down. So if I wanted to just say, I believe, first person singular, present indicative, active, then I would say pistuo, God. But I want to say they, which is third plural, believed. Okay, so now just think a second. What tense do we want for that? Do we want the present? Do we want a future? Or do we want something that happened in the past? Well, fairly obviously believed, so it wants to be a past tense, which means it's either aorist or imperfect. So now think for a second. The difference between the aorist and the imperfect is that the aorist tells you that it's extended in time in some way, whereas the imperfect doesn't tell... Sorry, <laughs> wrong way around. The imperfect tells you it's extended in time in some way, whereas the aorist doesn't tell you that it's extended in time in some way. So which do I want here? Fairly obviously, I don't want to tell you that it was extended in time in some way. All I'm saying is, at some point in the past, they believed God. And I'm not telling you anything about the aspect of the action. And therefore, this wants to be aorist. So third person plural, aorist of pistuo. So I want the epsilon augment with the breathing. I want the sigma suffix, epistuse. And now what I need to do is to find the third person plural ending. So back to my par paradigm verb, luo. Elusa, elusas, elusen, elusamen, elusate, elusan. So epistusan. They believed. They believed. Epistusan. They believe already includes the subject, so I don't need to do anything about that. The only other thing I need to do is the object, which is God. So, um, theos is the uh, word for God. I want hot in front of it. Of course, I don't want it in the nominative case, do I? What case do I want it in? Bit of a curveball here. What case do I want it in? Yeah, you remember way, way, way back, a few chapters ago, um, some verbs like akuo in the... Uh, previous example of Greek into English, uh, take objects in cases other than the accusative. And pistuo takes an object in the 
dative case, rather like they believed in God. That's how you could think about it. But it's interesting to note that actually when you say they believed to theo, which you might translate in God, if you just saw it like that, because it's in the dative case, actually that simply means they believed God. They believed God. And that's how you write the answer to number 10. Episteusan to theo. Okay, now finally, number 12. Put this one in because I thought this would cause some sweating of the brows among some of the students. And so here it goes. I used to speak, but now I will listen. I used to speak, but now I will listen. So what are we going to do here? Well, the first thing to do is simply to break it in half, because we've got a but now as a conjunction, but Allah, we'll give you that for nothing, Allah, and the now also, we'll have that, just stick it in there. Not, nothing is lost by just popping conjunctions and little particles like that in, um, because they don't really need to connect to anything much else. But now I will listen now. The next thing you need to do, having divided it into two, is just to think, let's translate these verbs one at a time. So let's start with the first one. What is the verb in this case? Fairly obviously, the action being described is speaking. So that's going to come from Lego. Now, which tense do you want to put Lego in? Present, future, imperfect or aorist? Well, when did it happen? It happened in the past. I used to. So that means it's imperfect or aorist. Do you want to say that it is extended in time in some way? Or do you want to just say it happened and that's all? Well, I think just as here, it's fairly obvious that you want to say that this action is in some sense extended in time. Again, because of a habitual, the habitual character of it. I used to speak. But now I will listen. So you want Lego in the imperfect and you want the first person singular. So if it's in the imperfect, you want the e, eh, the epsilon augment, and no sigma suffix. And if it's in the first singular of the imperfect, you do not want the o ending because that's the present ending. You want, we'll go back to your paradigm verb, take your time, elu on, elu s, elu n, elu omen, elu ete, elu on. Elu on, so eleg on. So I used to speak very simple, very simply is eleg on. I used to speak eleg on, alunun, but now, <laughs> and we get to the second verb. I will listen. What's the verb? What's the action going on here? It is listen. So the verb we're looking for is the verb. Akuo, first person singular, present indicative active, I hear or I listen or I am listening. But if that's the stem, aku, that's the, the verb, what tense do we want? Do we want to say this is happening now or it's going to happen in the future or it happened in the past? And here's a slight curveball because it does say now, doesn't it? And I think um, oh, Jeremy Duff has He's just thrown a little one that moves in the air and off the seam, as they say in English cricket parlance. Um, uh, you might be tempted to think that because of the now, you want to translate this in the present tense. But that's not actually the case. If you'd wanted to write this uh, as an action that was happening uh, right now, then it would have to say something like, I used to speak, but now I am listening. Now I am listening. That would be in the Greek present tense. Now I will listen strongly implies a future action. The sense of it, just think about this for a second, the sense of it, what this sentence actually means is now and from this point onwards I'm going to listen. This is something which will happen in the future, beginning immediately. As distinct from I used to speak but now I am listening where the focus is on right now. So we do want the future tense for this which means we don't want an epsilon or bent but we do want a sigma suffix and we want the first person singular so the ending is the same as the first person singular in the present tense aku so so let's pop that down here aku so elegon i used to speak alunun aku so but now i will listen there are some examples for you have at it do the rest of those examples in the halfway practice on page 71 
and then we will come back in the next video to look at a couple of complications or let's not call them complications excitements about the uh, epsilon prefixes and uh, different ways of putting verbs together with other words to create what are called compound verbs. Very exciting, lots of new things to learn. Keep going, 20 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day. Don't forget the vocab, keep, keep up with the vocab. Get yourself some flashcards or a schedule or a computer app or something, an iPhone app or whatever it is you have. Get learning that and we'll have you reading the New Testament in Greek in no time at all. Okay, God bless. Bye for now.